Back on the Zertas Islands, in the first two days of the expedition, the team has been able to find enough individuals of Atlantica Kalatoj for the captive breeding program to go ahead. That is three out of four species saved from extinction, a remarkable achievement. Now for the remainder of the expedition, the focus turns to the final species, Geometra Kuronla. The last known record of this snail was on the north side of the island, on a small patch on a steep cliff. And this is where the team is headed. What was the, the plan for the third day then? Yeah, so on the third day we took the boat to go to the opposite side of the island and the sea was a bit rough but uh, the rangers, they have a lot of experience, so even when it's not ideal, they manage to judge when we can get off or not. And so Isamberto and I, because we were there on a relatively quiet period, so we jumped off the boat and then it started rising. And even for us to get out, we had to judge the, the next bit of the exit, which was a bit exciting. And then Gerardo from Chester Zoo, he had a bit of a difficult uh, start of the day there because uh, he jumped off the boat and he got on the rock and then all of a sudden a big wave came and he got soaked. So it was a bit of a difficult start, but, um, but we managed to. You okay, Gerardo? Yeah, I'm good. Did you hurt yourself? No, no. You hurt yourself. No, no. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. of the island of Zerta Grand and we are going to search for Geometra Porunla which is one of the four species that we're trying to rescue here. We came here in May and we searched uh, quite a bit but we didn't find uh, enough individuals to start the captive breeding program for that species so we hope that today we're lucky and now we have to go up this gully that's the first step of the, of the trip. So yeah, long day ahead still. And then when you cross after the, the shelter, the, the landscape changes and it feels like you're in, in Mars. It's like uh, strange colors and spires and um, bits of fern. Like you see some bits of life in different places, but it feels very, very foreign. Uh, and eventually you keep uh, hiking on the top of the of the island there and if eventually you cross towards the other side where you find the ravine which is the one we go down to to search for uh, Geometra Kuronla. So this is Val de Castaneira behind me. Uh, this This valley here it is um, the only known habitat for a species of uh, tarantula that's endemic to Zertagrand. So this is the only place in the world where, where it can be found in the wild. And we still have to go all the way up the valley, all the way up there, um, until we reach the spot on the cliff where we, where we will be looking for uh, Geometra Coronula. We're quite lucky, it's, uh, it's cloudy. Um, so that means we're not as exhausted by the by the heat, um, but still, uh, a tough day is hiking today. One of the unique species found in this area is the endemic wolf spider. It was also in trouble a few years back, but a concerted conservation effort has helped them bounce back. We will be sure to make a video about this story in the future. So at this point things got busy, and there was unfortunately no time for filming. When every minute counts after such an effort to get there, Tiago felt it was best to focus only on the searching. And the team searched for hours, but unfortunately they did not find a single live individual. So we spent quite a bit of time searching for the snails um, and we didn't find them and it means it got a little bit late. So now we need to hurry for this about two, three hour back to where we sleep at the dock up. And so that means that we're resorting to a little bit of uh, Scree running of sorts, so that's what I'm getting to now.
you have an idea how long that hike back was? I mean, in terms of time, it must be about five hours, maybe. For me, I mean, I actually, I had never done that stretch of the island like that. So I actually enjoyed the, like, because that way I essentially have connected all the, <laughs> the top of, of the island. But yeah, it was, it was tiring and, and uh, we were a bit uh, pressed for, for time and we did end up uh, getting down the, to the house, like the, the final section of the trail, which is still, you need to be careful. We ended up doing it in the dark, which, but it, but it was okay in the end, yeah. So at this point, you might be wondering why they didn't go back the next day, which is what I decided to ask Dinarts, the expedition leader, and also whether he thinks there is still hope for this species. Um, I'm always optimistic. And uh, since uh, the species was gone for more than 150 years without any live record of the species, uh, I don't look at this, this kind of upset or situation that we have now as a declaration of extinction for the species. We need that luck, that little bit of luck of being on the right spot at the right time. So we need a bit of rain during the night because we are doing our service during the day. It usually you do it during the night because uh, they are nocturnal, uh, but uh, desertus is a very difficult place to address. So at night on this kind of, of slopes, it's not advisable to do, to do any kind of service. We get these kind of conditions, probably we'll get the, the species. But nonetheless, well, we're still trying. Yeah. On the fourth day, the team took a well-deserved rest day taking the opportunity to freedive and see some of the other wildlife that the desertage has to offer. And then on the fifth and final day, they went back up the mountain to monitor the wild population of the Shkula Leliana. So this is the kind of uh, footpath we have to, to use to get to the, to the site where we'll, we'll be looking for the snail species. Manojze here, ahead of me. He's, Hi. Uh, <laughs> Hi. He's a... Uh, a ranger with a lot of experience walking around this area and uh, you can notice by how confidently they they move around here. Eu chamo Manuel José Dalmado de Jesus, tenho 49 anos e estou nesta profissão há 22. Portanto, saí da tropa com 27 entrei logo a seguir nesta área. And uh, yeah, you just have to be careful where you step. There's a lot of loose rock. So you always have to, to, to pay attention as you progress here. So this time we are uh, only monitoring the, the population because we already collected enough individuals from, from this species. But uh, essentially we're searching in the middle of the, the fern here. And we've already found quite a few, quite a, quite a few individuals. So now we will mark them and release them. And uh, this is a method that then helps to estimate the, the population size and to see how it, it changes over time. Behind me is just uh, marking the, the snails from Dishkula Leliana here. And you can see all the individuals uh, lined up there. And we found some, some of them with the green mark, which was from we, when we were here in, in May. And now we're marking them in, in white um, so that we can know when they were, when they were tagged. And the purpose behind this is to help us estimate the, the size of the population. Anything to add? <laughs> Do you have a general idea how everything is going at the breeding centers, at the zoos? The three species that um, ha we have collected w during these expeditions are already breeding in captivity. Uh, there's still a lot to be figured out in terms of uh, parameters for, for their growth and, and potential reintroductions, but the fact that they've bred is already a, a huge su success. We'll also have a, an update looking a bit more into this component of the captive breeding program and uh, how it's progressing, and you'll be able to, to understand that, that side of it as well. Working directly with the scientists and the rangers that are so passionate about this ecosystem has been a privilege. We do many projects that are popular and easy to understand, 
such as planting trees, creating wetlands, or assisting with reintroductions. But when we set out to support ugly or uncharismatic species, we decided to do so because it was right, not because it was popular. And then something unexpected happened. We received a flood of support. And so many of you have told us that you understand why we do this project and that you are happy to help fund this work. This has been a breath of fresh air for all of us here at Mossy Earth and also for the team in Madeira that has had their decades long work acknowledged. So a big thank you to all of you who left a nice comment and above all to all of you who decided to become Mossy Earth members. To wrap up this expedition, I would like to show you an interview with Isamberto, the ranger and key naturalist who started all of this by rediscovering these species that were thought to be extinct. My name is Isamberto Silva. Eu já venho para aqui há mais de 30, 31 anos. Nós vamos aí a passear e parece que conhece tudo, de espécies Sim. todas. Eu nunca conheci ninguém que soubesse as coisas nesse detalhe. Como é que começou essa, essa a aprender tanto? Ou, ou tem algum truque para, para saber os nomes todos e estudar tudo tão a fundo? Bem, eu comecei desde pequeno, desde muito pequeno. Eu comecei a gostar de insetos, principalmente dos invertebrados, eram insetos, aranhas. E ao longo dos anos fui aprendendo com, através de livros, de, de investigadores e também fui consultando em livros. Depois, entretanto, mais posteriormente veio a internet, também algumas consultas foram feitas à internet. A primeira vez que eu vim aqui para as datas foi dia 14 de agosto de 1988. Foi quando começamos a construir a primeira estação. Depois, entretanto, Comecei a fazer vários trabalhos aqui, a proteção da reserva, também tendo dado apoios a, a projetos, a projetos de live, como a proteção de algumas espécies, como o caso da tarântula, do próprio lobo marinho e da freira, e também das plantas. Também dei fazer outros trabalhos para algumas espécies de aranhas, tem várias espécies aqui novas para a ciência, já foram descritas. E também na parte de, da melancofauna, dos, cara, dos caracóis. Neste momento estou aqui num projeto de recuperação de, de quatro espécies de caracóis estão quase extintas. We are not giving up on Geometra Coronula. We will be back here in the right season to survey at night and in better conditions. This is just the start of our work with uncharismatic species. So if you're not yet a member, but you like this project and you think it's worth supporting, then maybe check out our membership at mossy.earth. It costs the same as a Starbucks latte, and we use the money to restore nature across a variety of ecosystems. We have a community Discord where you can chat with the team and an app to track your impact. It is fun, but above all, transparent and impactful. So maybe consider checking it out. So that's the end of the expedition this time. We managed to get one more snail species, but we'll have to return for the for the fourth one. Cheers. <laughs>